generative AI was really exciting when it came out because it felt like the first time as a communications person, as a content person that I could play with AI and actually have an impact in my day-to-day -day life. So I was pretty open to using it right off the bat, playing around a little bit. I am in the brand and communications team at ESCP where I'm in charge of basically external communications. That's like social media, press releases, press relations, content, that kind of thing. So really asking myself when it made the most sense to use this tool. Really quickly, I was impressed by the quality of the results. I got here in Madrid in 2022 as a marketing professor in the marketing department. Uh, what I do in terms of research is about the future. So if you watch Black Mirror, anything you see there, this is what I do. If you think about uh, from a more, let's say, anthropological way, everything is a tool. So we need tools. And yes, from this perspective, yes, AI is another tool, but the potential it has to change everything is huge. I think we have this moment in, in our history as, as species, as human beings, in which we have the chance to, to reshape what we understand about being humans for the better or, or worse. I do believe in, in mind extension or human extension. I don't see it as a human replacement, for example. We have a very nice thing in the future if we learn how to do and why to do what we have to do with AI. One of the first things I realized would be helpful is thinking about what are tasks that we do over and over again that are pretty repetitive? And as a business school and most companies, we have an editorial charter. So we detail through many, many pages how to say what, what words we prefer to use at ESCP. It's my job to know what's in this charter. But we have colleagues across our school, across campuses, across Europe who are writing about ESCP. And no blame to them, no one really wants to spend time reading through the editorial charter to figure out what word we're allowed to use. And so in our team, a lot of the time we spend is reviewing content we receive, giving feedback, sometimes as simple as reminding folks that we write in British English versus I'm an American, but I don't use American English at ESCP. And that's a, a reminder that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So the question I asked is how can Gen AI maybe take part of that step out of our to-do? And with the option to work through this OpenAI collaboration and have access to ChatGPT EDU, um, there was the opportunity to create a custom GPT. So I started playing around with how you could input a base of knowledge into your custom GPT. So I input the editorial charter. I myself, having worked at the school for a number of years, have my own sort of style of writing and things that I tend to use to you know, express the tone of voice of ESCP. So I, I put those prompts in there. And I started playing with how our custom GPT could be the editor. Hello, Ember. Hey there, sounds like you're ready to get some help from Ember. Uh, what kind of assistance are you looking for? Maybe I can help out as well. My idea is to have a Vitor bot. I'm creating my own AI avatar to not to replace me, but to augment myself. This is the Ember project. It's, this is part of a major project. And this Ember um, pilot, if you will, is perhaps the first step in this, in this process. Basically, what I, what I have now is Ember, which is one of the voices uh, that ChatGPT has. He's my uh, teaching assistant. He has the syllabus, he has the content that I'm teaching to a given um, group. And during the, the um, live presentations of the final projects of these groups, Ember helps me to listen to their presentations, evaluate those presentations based on the rubric that I I have there as part of his log and give the students live feedback, meaning that I have a combination, you know, I have me as the human part and I have Amber as the AR part. And the final grade, the final output is a combination of both. In my project, we're not using ChatGPT to write the content the very first draft, but we are using it in the editing phase. 
And I've shared a little round with the team and the idea is that we receive content, needs to be reviewed before putting human eyes on it. We put it into the custom GPT. It reviews based off of all of our criteria and then makes suggestions on how to improve the piece. It's up to the user then to decide whether or not they want to take into consideration those suggestions, but it already takes a step out of our review process and allows the, the human who's going to review it afterwards to start with a base material that's already closer to the final result that we're looking for. So we're using the ESCP editor, uh, custom GPT that I created, that we're still in the test and learn phase with. But Carla is the content strategist. And as I mentioned, she receives content all the time that she has to review and get online. So what we're doing here is we're taking the first draft of the content she received and putting it through the editor first. This gives Carla sort of a head start to look at, okay, for example, we saw that there's some Zs in the article, which is American English. And as I mentioned, we write in British English. So there'll be a question of just going through and getting rid of those Zs, replacing them. And then it'll all give her a few other suggestions she can make. And then what's really nice is Carla can either just review the suggestions and or also ask the editor to propose a version with the edits integrated. So it's sort of a head start. I mean, not everything's perfect, but it gives a definitely a starting place when you have a pretty decent text to review. Sure. This pilot, it has a very uh, detailed protocol to make it work. But the gist here is first you have to prepare the syllabus, be very transparent uh, with the students because there is an ethical aspect here. So you have to say to them, well, we're gonna have Ember. This is ChatGPT voice, blah, blah, blah. Do you agree with that? Um, so you, you have to touch on this subject, of course. I have this, the syllabus um, uploaded. Then I have the rubric uploaded as well. And then the first thing that I do and professors using my, my protocol they have to do is to say Ember, something like that, Ember. You're going to be my teaching assistant for the day, uh, listen to those presentations and help me um, grade those, those groups based on the content that you already have in your log. And that's it. And Amber goes there and listens to the presentations with me. At the end of the presentation, Amber goes and gives feedback. Hello, Amber. Hey there. How's it going? What can I do for you today? All right. Today, you're going to act as a teaching assistant with a PhD in business management specialized in AI and robots in the business context. You will help me to grade some students' assignments for a master's in management. Um, it's a course called Working with Robots and AI. And to do it, first, you have to listen to their presentations and wait for my instructions to give them um, live feedback regarding their pitching skills and knowledge about AI. Now, let's begin with the first presentation. Start listening now and do not speak until I give you the command to do it. Do you understand? Got it. I understand. I wait for your cue before I jump in with any feedback. Uh, feel free to start the presentation whenever you're ready. Okay, so the group presentation is starting now and now you can listen. Okay. I think artificial intelligence is a very useful tool that can make your workflow faster and even give you ideas that you maybe didn't have at the beginning, but you always have to check the information it's giving you and give your personal uh, point of view of everything. Okay, Amber, now you provide feedback. All right, from what I heard, it sounds like they did a great job explaining the concepts of AI and its application in business. Uh, they seem pretty clear in their communication. Um, maybe they could add a few more examples or real world case studies just to make it even more engaging. But overall, I think they did a great job. Based on what I heard, I'd probably give them a solid B plus or maybe even an A minus. They seemed knowledgeable and clear. Once it's, uh, everything is done, I have the essays and then Amber comes again, and this is only with me. And together we analyze the essay plus the group presentation to give them the final grade. So it has three or four steps here to get to the final presentation or to the final grade. For managing the social media of the school, usually we receive content from our colleagues who are closest to the action. So imagine we have a conference in Merlin and we want to communicate about that conference. Our colleague 
Locally in Berlin will usually send us some base material. Sometimes they'll write the post that they would like to see. Sometimes they're just sending us the information. Let's say we receive a sort of written post. Now, ESCP as a brand has specific criteria for how we communicate on social media. Before the social media team reviews the post, the idea is that you would take the post you receive, you go into the custom GPT, which I've called the ESCP editor, and you say, hey, I have a post for social media about this conference. Can you please review and improve based off of ESCP's guidelines? You input the text and then it responds. Normally what it should respond with is a first version where it says, okay, here are my recommendations. And the idea is that this person in Berlin goes into the editor, inputs the text, receives the feedback, says, okay, I think the post corresponds to what ESCP's you know, objectives are, our brand style. Okay, now I send that to the social media team who then does a final check and then publishes it on social media. Yeah, 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 you want me to look at a, at a post? Yeah, okay, it looks pretty good. Just to like save a bit of time, can you send it to me and I'm gonna test my ChatGPT editor on it and I'll send yeah. you back yeah, the first round. Well, yeah, it looks good. Okay. Ethan did a first draft of the LinkedIn post. I'm gonna put it into the editor to allow me to sort of check that it meets our guidelines. And then I'll decide whether or not I keep some of their feedback, not always. And then I will send back my approved version to Ethan and he'll publish it on our LinkedIn. I'm very much in the experimentation phase. Like I have the prompts, I use it very frequently. I've shared it with colleagues, but now we're still doing sort of a truly test and learn where every time we put in a use case, a prompt, we have like an Excel file where I say, you know, how did it perform? I rank its performance and you have to adjust the GPT. Sometimes it doesn't always, you know, give me the answer that I'm looking for. And in some cases it actually makes more sense to break down that custom GPT to maybe serve different purposes. This project is not alone. There's other projects doing kind of similar things. So I feel like the next step is to look at how we link them. I would say the end goal of this project is to create a more harmonious brand voice. The nice thing here is I'm super into creating um, a library of prompt or a prompt library, meaning that depending on the situation, and this is something that we already have here at SCP, um, Depending on what you have to do as a professor, you go there and then you're saying, oh, I have to assign or I have to provide this assignment or I have to grade or I have to create a GPT for role playing. We already have a few prompts working as templates. So you from another topic, another course can replicate the template. So this is not restricted to, to my classes as well. So even if you are uh, from another um, field or even institution, you can have the template and go for it. ESCP Business School, and many companies for that matter, are made by the humans. We're made by the knowledge that comes from our professors. We're, we're made from the creations of our students. So if we pr only produce content that is, there's no human involved, it's not really linked with our core value and our core offer to society. So AI can help us do more do it faster, free up time to be more creative, but we still need, in my opinion, that hum human in the loop. And I think at this stage of the content creation process, it's, yeah, it reduces that risk and allows us to sort of still be involved. Do you remember when Google came out many, many ages ago? Google kind of replaced the encyclopedia in many situations. So Google is a searcher, ChatGPT, is the finder because you when you use Google or any other search engine you have to find the information that those um, search engines they, they gave you but now if you go to ChatGPT it gives you the information that you need I think it is mandatory to use it in our life I think we we need to understand at least what's happening not become a specialist but if you want to become a specialist come <laughs> it's nice mm -hmm.